I'm Abdul Jabbar Umar. I'm presently the Commissioner for Lab and Physical Planning at of State. All right. Now, let's go to Kano. I understand that Kano is the economic hub of Nigeria as well as Lagos. Now, what exactly is Kano State doing to add to the GDP of the country in general? Uh, thank you very much for the question. Um, as you know, the question of um, addition to the GDP of the country is a question of comparative advantage. Okay. And you look at uh, what our comparative advantage as a state is, like you rightly mentioned, as the commercial nerve center of the country, um, uh, through our various uh, initiatives and programs, uh, I can tell you. We're present in the process of setting up, uh, for example, special agri-processing zones. Again, relying on the fact that uh, commerce, agriculture, uh, going and hand in hand, uh, you know, some of, of our cooperative advantages. So through the SAPZs, like we say, which we aim to center across industrial clusters, we aim to provide a zone whereby aggregators, uh, farmers, uh, agricultural processors have a center piece where they meet. Uh, that enables them to process most of the agricultural produces. As you know, the lack of such facility contributes so much to you know, the loss of value in terms of income as well as uh, revenue to the state. So, you know, an activity such as that uh, aims to contribute greatly to the state. As you know, social investment as well. Our government is really a government that plays strong emphasis in uh, social investment, uh, as you may know, uh, recent we declared state of emergency on the education sector, yeah. and uh, through that we aim to refocus our efforts and energy towards contributing uh, heavily and investing heavily uh, in the educational sector. Of course, that might not. Uh, reveal itself uh, in terms of the benefits uh, you know, at this point in time, but uh, it's, a, it's an incremental investment that is made in the youth of the country, children, and, and hopefully you know, in the future, uh, in the near future, it contributes greatly. But even present, it adds to the you know, general returns of investment in terms of education and, and health. So you're not playing the now game, you're playing the long-term game. Yes, more like... so, so I sort of uh, just have like two examples where mm -hmm. we're thinking in the short short term as well yeah, as the medium long to longer term. All right, that's yes. quite beautiful. Now, let's go to the land, the land properties. Now, there's a 20,000 housing deficit in Nigeria. What exactly is Kano State doing to help resolve that? Uh, thank you very much again. Uh, this is into my role as a commissioner, so I think it's an easy question. Okay. As you know, land is one of our most valuable assets in Canada, and realizing that set about you know, having a framework where we open it up to the private sector to come and invest, provide infrastructure, and build sustainable housing. Sustainable housing in the way that bridges the housing deficit, as well as uh, providing decent and affordable housing to the people. Uh, recently, we partnered with the Federal Ministry of Housing and Urban Development, wherein we provided free land and their as equity to, to uh, towards you know bridging it, bridging the deficit, and in, in return, of course, they you know build affordable and sustainable housing for for the people of the state. Uh, we, we partnered as well with the, with the Federal Housing Authority, wherein we also hope to build thousands of houses within the state, not just houses, not just normal houses, but actually decent housing, uh, okay. you know, that have all the infrastructure and element of, of sustainability in that. Like I said, opening up the sector to the private uh, to the private players that can come and invest the money, so that we save our finite resources uh, into other areas that you know I mentioned earlier. Beyond that, we are partnering with 
you know, private sector organizations that really have good track record in, in the area of sustainable housing. And we are offering them, you know, free land as our equity, but also ensuring that we step up our regulatory responsibilities so that uh, we ensure that they provide the services and the quality that they say they are providing. All right, that is beautiful. Now, before we wrap up, this project of partnering with private equities and all of that, when exactly is the time that we're going to put for the project to be done? And how many of this housing deficit are you looking at solving? How many of these problems are you looking at solving? So, uh, as you know, Kano is a one piece, just one part of the subnational national Sure. Mm -hmm. So, whatever leap forward we're making, we're definitely contributing towards bridging the, the national gap. But in terms of the timeline, we have free land. And uh, for example, with the with, uh, Federal Ministry of Housing and Urban Development, the project has already kick-started. Okay. The request was put in, and within a week, His Excellency the Governor assured that the application was processed and the certificate of occupancy was issued to them. Uh, such underscores our commitment, His Excellency's commitment towards really working the talk, not yeah. just promising, but actually going ahead to, to implement uh, what has been promised. So uh, whatever, you know, that, that, that determines the timeline, definitely, or what determines the timeline would be the readiness of, of the investors uh, to come in and partner with the state. Like, like I, I mentioned, our focus is to free up equity rather than go in and invest and build housing. We ensure that, you know, the private sector players that have the money and are ready and the expertise as is to be able to deliver some of these projects come in. And, you know, we strengthen our regulatory aspect as government, as a government, to ensure that, you know, uh, they are aligned to global best practices. All right, that's very beautiful. Now, before we wrap up this interview, I'd like to know, what exactly are your thoughts on Business Day CEO for? Um, I I think, uh, like I mentioned, you know, during one of the sessions, uh, these are one of but very veritable opportunities that we need more of that really contribute towards uh, outlining where the challenges are uh, for us as a country, and especially in aligning our efforts, subnational efforts, with uh, the the national efforts, and also uh, having. Key hard conversations that you know help us to bring out also very practical solutions uh, that will hopefully help us in you know going the route for sustainable development. I just hope we have more and more of these. And as a state, I can confirm our commitment to, to supporting Business Day and similar initiatives. All right, thank you very, very thank much. You very thank you for coming. Thank you. Have a beautiful one. Thank you.